Can you believe it? It's been almost 14 years since Sony's PlayStation Portable first came out. Feel old yet? Well, that's what I'm here for, to make you feel old. Today we will review the PSP once again and list a couple of reasons why you should own one in 2018. Let's take a look. I love PSP's design, it actually reminds me the first model of Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. It's very comfortable to hold and the button layout is just perfect. The D-pad and the classic PlayStation buttons look and feel great. Size-wise, it's light, small and it can fit in your pocket. The back of the console reminds me of the Walkman from the 90s. Actually, Sony confirmed that's what they tried to achieve with the PSP, a modern Walkman. They even called it Walkman of the 21st century, referring to its multimedia capabilities. PlayStation Portable had five different models during its life cycle. The 2000 and 3000 usually considered to be the best of them all. This is probably because you can hook them up and play your games on a TV. 3000 also considered to have the best screen which is kinda true and kinda not. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. There are some things I love about the PSP and some people seem to just hate, like UMDs, aka Universal Media Discs. These little discs are able to store 1.8 GB of data and they don't just purely exist for games. PSP also had tons of movies released on UMD format. Just look at them, I love their design and the way they look. They're cute. I also love the shoulder buttons, another thing people usually disliked back in the day. I know they're flimsy and stuff, but they look like they're made out of glass so they kinda give an expensive look to the console. Yes, PSP looks nice, games look ok even for today's standards, but there are also three things I dislike about the system. Let's talk about them. PSP has a widescreen LCD with 480x272 resolution. Like I mentioned earlier, the 3000 model has a brighter screen with more natural colors and 5 times higher contrast. But it also has scan lines. Especially when there's too much motion on the screen, they become pretty visible to the eye. It's a bit of a letdown, but it's not that bad and not very noticeable in a lot of games. I also really, really dislike that glossy finish. Especially the piano black model is the worst. I don't know how it does that, but it collects dust and fingerprints even when you don't touch it. I've actually spent 20 minutes cleaning the console before shooting this video. Yes, I was angry and frustrated. Another thing I dislike is the analog stick or thumbstick or whatever. It has a nice textured surface, but the overall feels cheap and it's easily breakable. Thankfully, most games allow you to play with a D-pad, so it's not that big of a deal. Overall, it's a very nice and sleek looking device, but you shouldn't buy something just because it looks good. Except when you're shopping for clothes or furniture to pays or rigs and whatever. So we should talk about one or two reasons that may change your mind about not owning a PSP in 2018. PlayStation Portable has a huge library of excellent, or should I say pixelant, games. You can play some great exclusives like Crisis Core, Dissidia, Dexter and a bunch more. PSP also has some great versions of some PS2 and PS3 titles like Tekken, God of War and Persona 3. If they are not enough, PSP is also capable of running the entire library of PlayStation 1 games. But most importantly, when you buy a PSP, you buy a great retro gaming machine. I'm not even talking about hacking, emulators or homebrew. PSP has tons of retro game compilations from Activision, Atari, Capcom and even Sega. It's kinda unique in that way, just like the dream of a retro gamer came true. Still to this day, no other console lets you play almost half of the entire history of gaming like PSP does. And in my opinion, this reason alone is enough to own one in 2018. I know a lot of people think like, well my phone is able to do everything a PSP does and 
probably more. But let's be real here, have you ever played an old game with touchscreen controls and really enjoyed it? I have not. And if it's a problem for you too, you know you have to have a Bluetooth controller with you. Which wouldn't make any sense since PSP itself is not any bigger or heavier than a regular controller. Besides, you know all that emulators and the Bluetooth connection will drain your smartphone's precious battery life in a couple of hours. You wouldn't want that. If you want to collect for PSP, you don't have to invest a fortune. It's one of the cheapest systems that you can collect for. You can easily find any model you want and tons of games for really, really good prices. This is actually my second PSP that I bought 4 or 5 months ago and I only paid 30 bucks for it. It's in great condition and it also came with 3 games and bunch of other extras like a carrying case. Just be on the lookout consistently and no matter which country you live in, you will probably find a great deal whether for the PSP system or its games. And did I mention UMDs are really fun to collect for, uh, I just love them. You may ask, isn't PSP a little bit outdated, isn't it better to just get a PS Vita? Yes, that's an option, you will also be able to play anything you want from Vita's library. But don't get me wrong, I love the Vita and I'm a proud owner of a slim model myself, but it's still pretty much on the expensive side especially the memory cards. If you want to have a bunch of games on it, it'll cost you. Also, I know the Vita has great games but mostly niche titles from Japan. So if you're not into that kind of stuff, just go with the PSP, the much cheaper solution for your retro gaming needs. But I'm actually into that kind of stuff, that's why I bought one. Digimon Story and Persona 4 were more than enough to convince me. <laughs> And that's it for our PSP review slash guide slash list of reasons why you should buy one video. But what do you think about the PSP? Do you own one? Or are you planning to get one? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.